so like the computer said, we are going to record the session. So if you want to leave your camera off, that's fine. Uh, if you want to change your name, that's fine. Um, but it'll be mostly the speakers shown on the video and my slides and myself. So just so everyone's aware. I'll give it one more minute and then uh, we will get started just being mindful of time. Okay, um, I think we're going to get started and then we can just add people as we go. Just a quick reminder if everyone could please keep themselves muted during the presentation so we don't get any feedback and we can hear all our panelists. Um, we are going to welcome questions throughout the presentation if you want to put them in the chat um, or if you wait until the end, you can unmute yourself and ask yourself if you prefer. And we have someone monitoring the chat so they can let me know um, what's going on. So um, I'm going to just start our slideshow and then we will get going. Here we go. Okay, so hi everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Michelle McDonnell and I'm a Bridging the Gap uh, program coordinator and a program manager with DC Wheelchair Sports Association. I am very happy to be able to welcome you today to the second event of our BTG speaker series where we're going to talk about wheelchair tennis. The first swing, how players and coaches today got involved and what they love most about the sport. Um, before we get started, I want to take this time to respect, respectfully acknowledge the traditional and unceded territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Squamish, and Shemanus First Nations on which our BC offices stand. And I would encourage all of you to take a moment to also acknowledge wherever you are joining us from today uh, across the country. Um, okay. Merci à tous et à toutes pour nous joindre aujourd'hui. Uh, mon nom c'est Simon Richard. Uh, je vais faire la, trans la traduction aujourd'hui en français. Uh, je suis aussi coordonnateur de programme avec Parasport New Brunswick. Um, puis aujourd'hui, j'ai le plaisir de vous accueillir aujourd'hui uh, pour la deuxième session uh, de la série Speaker Series uh, au-delà au des limites. Uh, le, le sujet aujourd'hui, c'est le tennis en fauteuil roulant, uh, le premier service. Uh, avant de commencer, uh, j'aimerais vous uh, rappeler de rester sur le, le mode silencieux. Uh, il va aussi y avoir une, une session de questions à la fin. Uh, puis aussi, uh, on aimerait de souligner uh, tous les territoires uh, des Premières Nations à travers le pays. All right, so we're here because of Bridging the Gap. So first, a little bit about what Bridging the Gap is. I think a lot of people have kind of heard about it or have actually gone through a Bridging the Gap program, but maybe aren't aware. So Bridging the Gap is a national outreach awareness and first involvement program designed to increase opportunities for participation in para-sport for individuals with, and in some cases without, physical disabilities. It was developed 22 years ago as a local program in BC, and it has since spread across the country and become a model for para sport development in Canada. Um, the program is delivered by Bridging the Gap coordinators in provincial and disability sport organizations. And today on the call, we have representatives from all of the organizations that you see below, including Parasport and Recreation PEI, Parasport Quebec, Wheelchair Sports Alberta, BC Wheelchair Basketball Society, Parasport New Brunswick, Ontario Para Network, Saskatchewan Wheelchair Sports Association, and myself from BC Wheelchair Sports Association. Donc, le programme uh, Bridging the Gap, c'est un programme d'information, de sensibilisation ainsi que de première uh, participation pour les gens ayant un, un, un handicap physique. Uh, c'est un programme qui est uh, diversifié à travers le Canada, um, à travers tous les, les différents uh, pro organismes provinciaux, uh, dont il y a la, la Colombie-Britannique, l'Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, 
l'Ontario, Québec, euh, New Brunswick et euh, l'île du prince édouard um, Et puis, il y, a, il y a un représentant de chacun de ces provinces euh, parmi nous aujourd'hui. So throughout the pandemic, um, all of the Bridging the Gap coordinators from across the country met regularly to discuss challenges we were each facing and how we're adapting to the new normal in sport. And while every provincial sport system is different and our experiences over the past 15 months have been very unique, what is common amongst us is our passion for getting new participants involved and spreading awareness about para-sport. And so to that end, we decided to create the BTG speaker series or the Bridging the Gap speaker series to share stories of our members and enhance understanding of our sports in the community. So we are today to d'avoir notre deuxième session du programme uh, BTGC Speaker Series. Uh, tous les coordinateurs de programme ont été réunis uh, pendant la pandémie. On voulait continuer à promouvoir et partager certaines uh, histoires de nos athlètes, uh, ainsi que d'accueillir no de nouveaux membres aussi à travers le uh, programme BTG. Uh, et ce, en, en faisant des programmes vi virtuels dans uh, cette uh, série uh, va, va continuer ce mouvement uh, pour, pour le programme BTG. All right. So Bridging the Gap aims to overcome barriers to participation in sport through multiple program components. Each province delivers their program in a way that best suits their individual circumstance, but the components remain consistent and include have a go days, uh, information and education se sessions for participants, but also for allied health practitioners and other community organizations. Um, addressing barriers to participation, including equipment loans, low or no cost programming, and having athlete ambassadors and peer support workers. Uh, introductory and developmental, developmental level programming so that once you try a sport, you have somewhere to go. Uh, partnerships with rehabilitation centers and or community organizations and individualized support and follow-up. Donc, les objectifs du programme BTG uh, sont uh, il, y a, il y a des journées de découverte qui sont faites. Uh, il y a des sessions d'information et d'éducation, donc vraiment la promotion de certains sports. Um, il y a aussi, on essaie de minimiser les obstacles aussi pour les nouveaux et, et participants présents aussi dans certains sports, uh, en, en fournissant de l'équipement, um, en réduisant les coûts aussi de, de participation, uh, puis aussi en, en faisant un un programme de, uh, ayant des athlètes ambassadeurs qui va soutenir les nouveaux athlètes uh, qui vont rentrer dans le programme. Um, le programme aussi uh, est à différents niveaux. Il est, il est fait aussi pour les, les gens qui sont vraiment au niveau d'initiation uh, et aussi uh, au niveau du développement de l'athlète. Uh, C'est aussi un, un programme qui, qui est aussi en partenariat avec plusieurs uh, centres de réadaptation à travers le pays. Um, puis c'est surtout pour essayer de soutenir les athlètes, uh, les, les, les faire rentrer dans les sports uh, et ensuite uh, les suivre à travers leur progression dans, les, dans leur sport uh, choisi. Okay, so one of the components of the Bridging the Gap program is the Equipment Loan Program. Uh, so equipment loans are available to anyone wishing to get involved in sport, whether at a drop-in program or as an individual rental that the athlete can take with them and use in their community. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, and I'm not sure there's many on this call, sport chairs are specialized pieces of sport equipment, just like hockey skates or a bicycle, and they're designed to enhance an athlete's speed and agility on the field of play. Chairs are quite expensive. Um, some upwards of $10,000. Uh, but through the loan program, athletes can borrow equipment for a very minimal fee. fee, fee. And sports chairs are designed to you know, maximize speed and efficient turning, provide support and balance through sport specific movements, provide comfort for the athlete. So, uh, the program uh, d'emprunt d'un équipement uh, is quand même très, très spécifique aux, aux nouveaux athlètes et aux, aux athlètes qui sont présentement dans certains sports qui veulent essayer de, de nouveaux sports aussi. Uh, les équipements qui sont fournis uh, sont très spécifiques à chacun des sports uh, que l'athlète veut uh, choisir pour son, sa participation. Uh, les fauteuils uh, sont, sont très spécifiques en termes de, de sécurité et confort de l'athlète. Donc, 
Euh, ils sont très, très adaptés pour, euh, de ce côté-là. Et ils vont aussi maximiser la vitesse et l'efficacité de, des mouvements euh, pour chacun des sports. Donc, euh, le, les fauteuils qu'on voit sur l'écran tout de suite, il y a un fauteuil de, de rugby en fauteuil roulant, euh, d'athlétisme et de, aussi un, un fauteuil de basketball en fauteuil roulant euh, qui sont vraiment adaptés pour ces sports. So as I mentioned, there are Bridging the Gap coordinators across the country that are ready to answer your questions and help new participants get involved. And I would encourage anyone uh, curious about wheelchair sport or looking to get involved, whether as an athlete or as a volunteer or as a community champion, to reach out to their local contact for more information. We'll also distribute these slides um, at the end of the presentation and the contact information. But here it all is. And everyone's on this call today. Donc, euh, sur l'écran, on a les contacts de chacun des euh, coordonnateurs de programmes euh, dans chacune des provinces euh, qui sont responsables du programme BTG. Donc, on vous encourage de les contacter euh, si vous avez des questions ou si vous voulez vous impliquer dans certains sports. So today, we're here to talk about wheelchair tennis, which is the sport that I run in BC. So that's exciting. Um, so before I pass it off to Nathan and our panel, I just want to share a little bit about the sport. So wheelchair tennis really is a sport for life. We have children as young as seven playing wheelchair tennis. Um, and then you can play for a very, very long time into your career, or, you know, in your life. Can be enjoyed by family and friends of all ages and abilities with or against stand-up players and at all levels from recreation to competition. Um, the great thing about wheelchair tennis is you don't need another wheelchair tennis player to play. You can play with anybody um, and anywhere. So the game is played on a standard tennis court, but I would argue you could also make it work anywhere that's flat enough for a sports chair if you have a, a portable net. And the basic rules are the same um, as standing or able-bodied tennis, except that the ball is allowed to bounce twice before being returned. Um, so uh, that means that if you play in a wheelchair, um, you get two bounces. And if your opponent or your doubles partner is playing standing up, they have to return it off the first bounce uh, before the ball is out of play. Um, so we've had juniors play on high school tennis teams. We have high performance players that play in a league and every other player is standing. And we've hosted um, up and down or run and roll tournaments uh, where we have some players who use a wheelchair to play tennis and some players who do not. It's a great sport if you're in a smaller community or the only person um, who uses a sports chair to play tennis in your community. Um, competition is held in singles and doubles formats and there are two divisions. So the open is for athletes who have a lower limb impairment um, and there is men's, women's and junior divisions within the open. And then there's a quad division and that's for athletes who have also an upper limb impairment uh, associated with their disability. Um, there are tennis tournaments held across Canada. Uh, we host uh, the Vancouver International Wheelchair Tennis Tournament and there are a number of tournaments um, in Ontario. Um, and then the, there's also an international tour around the world. So anywhere you uh, see tennis, there's probably wheelchair tennis as well, which is very exciting. Donc, aujourd'hui, euh, on va toucher surtout sur le sport du tennis en fauteuil roulant. Euh, ce sport est un sport pour la vie, vraiment. Euh, C'est un sport que tu peux jouer à un très, très jeune âge. Euh, et puis, jusqu'à juste ce que tu viens... Uh, de plus en plus vieux aussi. Donc, uh, c'est un sport qui peut être joué en famille, en amis. Uh, c'est aussi un sport où est-ce que tu peux jouer uh, debout uh, contre des joueurs qui sont debout, comme des joueurs qui sont uh, en chaise roulante. Le tennis, c'est vraiment un sport qui est, qui est quand même très, très inclusif de ce côté. Um, ça peut jouer aussi, aussi à toutes sortes de niveaux, uh, autant au niveau récréatif que compétitif. Uh, les Terrain euh, au niveau du, du tennis en fauteuil roulant euh, sont quand même joués sur des terrains standards. Euh, les règlements sont très similaires. Euh, les, le seul règlement qui est différent euh, quand, lorsque tu es joué dans une chaise, c'est que la personne qui est dans la chaise a deux, a deux rebonds euh, et puis la, la personne qui serait debout aurait seulement un rebond à retourner. Um, les, du côté des compétitions, ça joue aussi au niveau simple et double, euh, ainsi que les divisions euh, ou les catégories plutôt. Euh, il y a deux catégories. Il y en a une, c'est au niveau open qu'on appelle, 
qui est uh, pour les joueurs qui sont fauteuils uh, ayant une, un handicap au, au niveau des membres inférieurs du corps. Um, et puis les, la division quad, uh, c'est pour ceux uh, qui ont une, une déficience au, au niveau des membres inférieurs et supérieurs uh, du corps. Donc, c'est ça. All right, so now um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'd like to introduce Nathan Bragg. Nathan is a communications coordinator at the UC Wheelchair Sports Association and we're very um, happy to have him here today to lead our panel for us. Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. We're very fortunate today to have three incredible um, guests as part of this panel. Um, first up we have Candace Comden from Ontario. She's a member of the Ontario Provincial Wheelchair Tennis Team, and she's also an on-para ambassador who's incredibly passionate about spreading awareness about wheelchair tennis and getting more people involved. Um, from BC, we have Barry Henderson, who's a member of Tennis Canada's High Performance Program. Uh, he's been playing tennis for a number of years now and is a great example on how it's never too late to get involved in sport. Uh, and lastly, we're very privileged to be joined by Kai Schremeyer, uh, he's a three-time Paralympian and Paralympic medalist for Germany, um, who's a highly respected and incredibly decorated coach, um, who's worked with a number of wheelchair tennis players from across Canada, including recent Para Pan Am gold medalist Rob Shaw. So to start things off, we're just going to ask questions um, to everyone on the panel, and they can jump in. And our first question is what made you decide to try wheelchair tennis? And were you unsure about giving it a go when you first started? And we'll start with Candice. Yeah, for Donc, sure, it's nice, it's really, oh, sorry. Donc, uh, les, on est très, très choyé aujourd'hui d'accueillir trois, uh, trois très bons invités. On a premièrement on a Candice Condon, uh, dans l'Ontario, on a Barry Anderson et Kai Schrammeyer uh, de la Colombie-Britannique. Uh, la première question aujourd'hui, uh, c'est uh, comment as-tu commencé de, uh, à t'impliquer dans le tennis en fauteuil roulant et pourquoi as-tu uh, as choisi ce sport? First of all, I'd just like to say it's really awesome to be here. Um... It's always a privilege to talk about a sport that I love so much. So the way that I got involved in wheelchair tennis for the very first time was actually at a have a go day that was put on by on para. Um, and that was probably 10 years ago. Um, and I just fell in love with it instantly knew I wanted to be involved. Um, I was absolutely nervous um, to give it a go the first time. Um, having no previous sport experience growing up. Um, so it was definitely a chance that I took when I went, but I have never regretted it. Donc, Candice a, a été exposée au tennis pour la première fois à peu près dix ans passés à une session uh, d'une journée découverte uh, en tennis en fauteuil roulant. Um, uh, elle n'avait jamais pensé de, de jouer au tennis en fauteuil roulant avant. Uh, et c'était la première fois qu'elle a été uh, exposée à ce sport. Elle a, très, elle a vraiment aimé ça. Um, et puis, elle a, elle, a reste, elle a décidé de rester avec ce sport depuis ce jour. All right, so moving on, we'll go to uh, Barry next. Barry, how did you get started in wheelchair tennis? Um, and were you apprehensive at first at all? Comment as-tu uh, comment as-tu commencé à jouer au tennis, Barry? Et étais-tu un peu nerveux pour commencer? All right. Uh, once I would like to echo uh, Candice's sentiments just around how uh, privileged and honored I am to be here and, and, and bringing sort of the, the word of the, the court, wheelchair tennis. Um, so I also it was a have a go day about six years ago. And uh, little did I know that um, the person that introduced me to uh, wheelchair tennis was a former world number one player. I was I was lucky enough that at my have a go event, in Langley, uh, Kai was was the person there introducing us to tennis. And, uh, you know, if you can imagine the first time you ever get introduced to hockey, it's Wayne Gretzky doing the introduction to the sport. That's uh, now in retrospect, I realize that's what was happening with me. Um, 
I, I played tennis before I lost my leg. I'm an amputee. And uh, it, um, so when I first started wheelchair tennis, it was, it was really, uh, I was, I was, I just fell in love with it immediately. And it was, and it, I just was so excited that this was a sport that I, um, that I could do. And, and I think that certainly having played tennis as an able-bodied uh, athlete, uh, it made the transition um, fairly, fairly quick. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a fabulous sport. No hesitancy at all. Um, Barry a commencé à, à jouer au tennis, uh, la même chose que Candice, à une journée découverte, à peu près six ans uh, passés. Uh, lui, c'était, il a mentionné aussi que c'était un, un, un de nos invités aujourd'hui uh, qui l'a vraiment introduit au tennis uh, lors de cette journée. Um, il a, adoré, il a adoré son expérience la première journée. Il a, fin, il, a, il a vraiment eu la piqûre depuis la première journée qu'il a essayé. Um, certainement à cause aussi qu'il qu était un, un adepte du tennis déjà uh, avant, son, avant sa blessure. Puis uh, il a vraiment adoré cette expérience. Ça l'a vraiment um, inspiré pour continuer son parcours à travers le sport. Fantastic. And now, Kai, uh, what about you? I know you didn't get introduced to the sport in Canada. Uh, you were introduced to it in Germany. But when you first discovered wheelchair tennis, what was that experience like for you? La première fois que tu as essayé le tennis uh, en Allemagne, Kai, uh, quelle était cette expérience pour toi? Yes, thank you very much for the invite. Delighted to be here and, and talk about a, a sport that clearly is, is dear to, to my heart. Um, so at the time I was playing, the, we're talking, I started, we're talking late 80s, early 90s, there was no concept of have a go days uh, in Germany, and as I'm not sure that in Canada, uh, it, it must have been similar. So it was a pure coincidence, I m was approached by a wheelchair basketball player who asked me, hey, you're tall, do you want to try this? And I had no clue what wheelchair sport was, I'm an amputee. I had bone cancer when I was 15 and had been immediately fitted with a prosthetic leg. So the world of wheelchair sports was completely foreign to me. Tried wheelchair basketball, completely loved it, got competitive about it. But somehow my first love being tennis, I had always played. My parents are both avid tennis players. Um, when I saw that you could play wheelchair tennis, I kind of... Uh, went back to my roots and uh, decided to uh, concentrate on tennis and still love playing basketball recreationally. Donc, Kai a commencé à, à jouer au tennis uh, dans les années 1980-1990 en Allemagne. Um, il a été exposé au sport du tennis en fauteuil roulant par son entraîneur de basketball en fauteuil roulant. Uh, Kai est un amputé uh, depuis sa blessure et puis... Um, il a toujours adoré jouer au tennis quand il était plus jeune, uh, donc il a décidé de, de commencer au tennis uh, dans les années 90, puis il a, il a tombé en amour avec le sport encore une fois, um, lui aussi, puis um, il a décidé de concentrer ses efforts à devenir de meilleur en meilleur de jour après jour. So, our next question is, what do you enjoy most about wheelchair tennis? And uh, for this one, we'll start with Kai, because you went last on the last one. Um, so yeah, Kai, can you tell us what you enjoy most about the sport? I have one question first, this. if that's okay. Yep, go ahead. Before you guys get into that next one, uh, someone was wondering, Patrick Levis, what injuries you've been exposed to in tennis and how have you overcome them? Donc, quelle était ta blessure uh, dans le sport du tennis et comment... Come on, you uh, pass out about. Who is this for? Uh, I, I believe it was for the last speaker. Um, are we going to are we going to have a Q and A at the end that maybe we can deal with all the yeah, questions? Yeah, we'll add that one to the end. I think. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Yeah, so just circling back to, to where we were, um, our next question for the panel was, what do you enjoy most about wheelchair tennis? Uh, and I think we'll start with Kai, um, just because you ended the last question. And also you've had um, a very long career in the sport. So I, I feel like you'll have a really interesting answer to that. Thank you, Kai. 
on a very basic level, there's so many layers to this answer. On a very basic level, I think what all tennis players ultimately look for is that clean feeling when you hit the ball and, and the sound it makes when it comes cleanly out of your racket, lands exactly where it's supposed to land, does exactly what it, uh, what it, what you want it to do. That's a very basic answer. On top of that, just to add things like obviously the competitiveness, the camaraderie with other players. Uh, the travel around the world, the events that I was fortunate to participate in, beating up on Barry Henderson, I'd add that to the list. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Kai, Kai adore uh, le, la sensation de frapper la balle parfaitement uh, pour un coup parfait. Um, il adore aussi uh, de côtoyer les, uh, les autres uh, joueurs de tennis en fauteuil roulant à travers le monde. Il adore de voyager. Um, et il a, il a aussi uh, admis à la fin qu'il qu adore de battre uh, Barry Anderson uh, au tennis en fauteuil roulant. So, Candice, what is it that you really love about the sport and what is it that, that's kept you involved um, after starting out 10 years ago? Candice, qu'est-ce que toi tu aimes à propos du tennis et qu'est-ce qui t'a uh, gardé dans le sport? Uh, for sure. Um, obviously, everything that Kai said, like the, just the feeling of being out on the court. Um, for me, it was that sense of pride that really got me hooked. Because um, every time I went onto the court, um, I became this different person. So when I came off the court, I felt really proud of what I had done. And of course, anybody who has ever been proud of themselves knows how good that feels. Um, so definitely that and obviously the friendships that I have been able to cultivate uh, with Team Ontario and uh, athletes that I've met around the world. Fantastic. Bon. Candice adore la, la sensation de, de jouer un sport uh, inclusif. Um, elle adore uh, tous, les, tous les mouvements qu'elle peut faire sur le, ten, sur le terrain de tennis. Um, et puis elle adore aussi de, de se faire des amis sur le terrain. Okay, so moving on, we'll go to Barry and we'll just get his answer to this question. So Barry, what is it that you enjoy most about wheelchair tennis? I think probably the thing I enjoy least about wheelchair tennis is when Kai hits that perfect shot exactly where he wants it to go and follows it up with a come on when he's playing against me. But uh, <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of things that I enjoy, Definitely the things that both Kai and, and Candice Kanda, said. And, and I think uh, for me, it's I would like to sort of echo one of the things that Michelle said is just the um, the ability to play against my able-bodied uh, friends and, and family. Like tomorrow morning, I'm, I, I've got a 7.30 a.m. Uh, tennis date with my brother. And it, it's, it's actually brought us a, a lot closer together, having that opportunity to can play competitively against each other. And, and, and as a, as a, wheelchair athlete i'm able to compete against able-bodied athletes and um you know and 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 win and 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 really uh so for me that's that's been a great thing and uh in in my whole town where i live in mission i'm a member of a mixed doubles tennis ladder where everyone is able-bodied and it's just the social aspect of tennis uh, uh it just really brings that full force and it's such a it's, it's a great access point for uh, wheelchair athletes to uh, participate in their community athletics. Donc, Barry adore le, le sport du tennis en raison des, uh, des autres points que Candice et Kai ont aussi mentionné. Il a aussi ajouté qu'il adore le tennis en, en raison de, du point d'accessibilité um, et d'inclusion uh, de ce sport. Il adore de jouer avec ses, ses amis et sa famille. Uh, qui sont uh, qui jouent debout uh, contre lui. Uh, donc c'est vraiment un sport qui est, qui est quand même très très uh, inclusif de ce côté-là. Tu peux jouer contre, contre des gens qui sont debout et toi tu seras en chasse aussi. Donc um, il adore cet aspect. Great. So our next question, I, I'm really happy that everybody's had such a positive experience, you know, with getting involved and those first times coming out really sparked a, a great interest in all of you. Um, but as we know, sometimes people can face um, barriers or challenges accessing sport. And the question for the panel is, what barriers or challenges have you faced getting involved in wheelchair tennis? Uh, and for this question, we'll start with Barry. 
and move through the panel. Donc, Barry, quel est l'obstacle, euh, quel est le plus grand obstacle que tu as passé à travers euh, en jouant au tennis en fauteuil roulant? I think probably the main obstacle was, was not knowing about it, right? So, so I lost my leg uh, 30 years ago and as a, you know, a young man at the age of 24 and I only discovered wheelchair tennis for six years. And it's funny because I'm on this panel with, with, with Kai and, and uh, we would have, if I would have found the sport earlier, um, we would have been on, on tour together and uh, playing, competing against each other. And here I am, you know, trying to, to be this uh, new member of Canada's high performance team and being coached by Kai. And uh, it, so that I think was probably the biggest obstacle. I, and the other thing is coming from uh, being an amputee and never really being in a wheelchair, just, just moving a wheelchair uh, and, and, and my mobility around the court, that has certainly taken a lot of time to adapt to that aspect of the sport. Well, Barry uh, mentioned that the obstacle that was the most difficult for him was that he started very early to play tennis in the wheelchair. Il a été amputé à peu près 30 ans passés et il a été amputé a few years ago and he has only started 6 years ago to play tennis en fauteuil roulant, donc, um, et, you know, un début très tardif uh, pour lui, uh, mais il, il adore de, de continuer à s'améliorer à chaque jour et essaie de se rendre au plus haut niveau qu'il peut. And now, for you, Kai, um, as a coach, you've kind of had the opportunity to see athletes from across the country um, and work with a number of different people. So what barriers... Um, or challenges do you see to, um, for prospective athletes when they start playing wheelchair tennis? Yeah, so... Quel est les, quel est les plus gros obstacles uh, que tu penses que les, les nouveaux joueurs de tennis auraient uh, ces temps-ci, uh, Kai? Barry touched on this. Clearly, uh, it's the mobility piece is, is not easy for beginners, especially if they don't come from another wheelchair sports. So to be able to coordinate the chair and still have that eye-hand coordination to hit that tennis ball is, it can be difficult at times. So my, my advice then is you just uh, patience and just enjoy hitting the ball. You know, don't worry too much about balls you're not getting to just, you know, try to get as much volume of actually hitting a tennis ball. The, the mobility will come. And um, once you put these two together, that's obviously then, um, when, when it becomes really fun. Donc, l'obstacle que Kai remarque euh, le plus fréquent pour les nouveaux joueurs, c'est naturellement la mobilité sur le terrain. Euh, il, il a juste aussi que euh, son message pour les, les nouveaux participants, c'est vraiment de se concentrer à frapper euh, la balle. Um, et puis, lorsque, lorsque, lorsque tu continues à pratiquer, tu vas acquérir la mobilité de plus en plus. Donc, lorsque, lorsque tu seras capable d'acquérir cette mobilité uh, et d'accompagner ça avec uh, l'habilité la, de frapper la balle, uh, c'est vraiment ce temps-là que tu deviens un très, très bon joueur de tennis. Great. And now, going off this question um, for Candice, I know one thing you've mentioned is it was really great for you to be able to get assistance um, from Ampera, from your provincial organization and accessing equipment and removing that barrier. So can you talk to us a bit about um, how important that's been for you and how helpful that's been um, on your journey as an athlete? Quelle est, um, comment a été ton, ton expérience avec le soutien uh, du prêt d'équipement uh, dans ta province? Uh, tu as été et très très supporté de ton côté donc comment a été ce processus yeah for sure um so basically what i tell everybody is without on para there would be no candace playing wheelchair tennis um that's just the reality of the situation as we touched on earlier the sports equipment is not cheap um and it's also when i was growing up not readily available um so in my late 20s Um, discovering that on para was available and that I was able to rent the sport chair um, and it allowed me to play the sport that I was falling in love with um, that was a huge that made a huge difference for me for sure it's definitely made a huge difference donc la province uh, qui a vraiment aidé Candice uh, sur l'Ontario ils ont uh, ils ont vraiment procuré uh, l'opportunité de, de jouer au tennis en y fournissant une chaise Uh, 
spécifiquement les, les équipements euh, pour le tennis sont très très dispendieux quand même avec les chaises euh, donc euh, c'était de ce côté que l'Ontario a vraiment euh, aidé à, à procurer euh, les équipements qu'il fallait à travers le programme BTG euh, et le prêt d'équipement. OK, so now we're going to go into some specific questions that are made for each individual panelist. Um, so my first question in this set um, is for Candice. Obviously, we're trying to grow wheelchair tennis for everybody, um, but we do have a, a fairly small uh, women's division in Canada that we're, we're trying to expand in and get more girls and women involved in parasport. Do you have any specific advice um, for young girls and women who are thinking about getting involved in sport? Might be Donc, on essaie de, de grandir le nombre de, de, de filles, de femmes euh, impliquées dans le tennis euh, et, et autres par sport aussi. Euh, quel serait ton message pour les jeunes filles euh, qui veulent s'impliquer dans les par sports? Yeah, so um, obviously, I would love to see more girls and women getting involved in the sport. Um, I would love the competition. <laughs> Um, you know, ide ideally, um, or usually, I should say, um, there's more men in, in the men's division than there are women in the women's division. So for anybody who's thinking about giving it a try, please do it. Like that is the biggest um, advice I could give to anybody. Um, I took a chance on myself, you know, 10 years ago, and it's changed my life. Um, so definitely just take that chance, um, be brave and, and try it if you have the opportunity. Reach out to your communities um, because there are things out there. We're very lucky these days to have more and more opportunities to get involved in wheelchair sports um, than there were, you know, back when I was growing up. So definitely take the chance and you won't regret it. Well, Candice mentioned that it's certain that uh, the number of filles uh, is very, very est quand même assez bas tout de suite. Um, elle mentionne aussi qu'elle um, aimerait voir um, les filles, le nombre de filles um, monter, la participation uh, monter à travers le Canada. Um, elle encourage les filles de, de s'impliquer, uh, d'essayer de, le sport en, en tennis, en fauteuil roulant et même d'autres sports, uh, d'autres parasports qui sont uh, accessibles dans leur province. Um, les, les programmes sont là, uh, le soutien est là, elles encouragent vraiment de, de s'impliquer. Um, puis, prends, prends une chance, puis tu, tu vas te rendre, uh, tu vas te rendre juste à, à améliorer tes habiletés et vraiment ton plein potentiel éventuellement um, avec, avec le support dans, dans les provinces uh, procurées. All right, my next question is for Barry. Um, it has to do with the fact that not everyone that plays wheelchair tennis um, has to use a wheelchair for every aspect of their daily life. There's a lot of people who are eligible to play the sport, um, who have a range of different impairments, um, who might walk or, or stand most of the time and only use a wheelchair for sport. Can you tell me what it's been like for you um, to get involved in a wheelchair sport Um, and what advice you would have for people who might think that wheelchair sports aren't for them, even though they can get involved. Donc, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup d'athlètes uh, qui ont, qui ont peut-être des prothèses ou autre moyen de se déplacer autre qu'un qu fauteuil en fauteuil roulant, uh, qu'un fauteuil roulant um, dans la vie de tous les jours. Um, comment es-tu impliqué et quel serait ton message pour uh, les athlètes uh, qui n'ont pas qui, qui n'utilisent pas de chaise euh, à, à chaque jour euh, et qui pourraient s'impliquer dans les, dans les sports en fauteuil roulant. Well, it's actually, I mean, that's a good question and actually it's quite uh, relevant because one of the chat questions I saw earlier was uh, from Stuart just regarding uh, balance issues and being unable to run and, and would he qualify to play wheelchair tennis and 
I, I don't know, Stuart, it's hard to answer that question because I don't know the exact specifics of, of uh, your, uh, your challenges. But um, the one thing I would say to people, like I'm, so I'm pretty much never in a wheelchair. Sometimes when I get uh, sores, I, like I do have a day chair that, um, that help me when I'm teaching if, if I can't wear my leg, but uh, for, I haven't used that for sort of a year. Um, I really would have people sort of look at a wheelchair, a tennis wheelchair, if you, um, you know, just have sort of minor mobility issues and you qualify to play wheelchair tennis, look at it as a, as a piece of sporting equipment. That's, uh, that's how it was framed to me. And uh, it's, if you look at it like that, it's just, you know, it's a pair of running shoes, you know, it's a, it's a tennis racket. It's, it's, it's just there to help you compete uh, in, in a sport. So I, I would just say, get involved. Um, the one, the, the interesting thing is one of the reasons why I've done, done so well in, uh, in, in the open division in, in men's tennis is, is because I do have quite, quite a high level of function. So there aren't very many, there's only two divisions in, in wheelchair tennis. So it does give you um, a competitive advantage. Uh, it gives me a competitive advantage. Of course, that's way to way. Um, I, I lose that advantage because I'm such an old man. However, uh, I'd just say get involved. Get involved in, in the sport. Fantastic. Donc, Barry mentioned that lui utilise une, une prothèse à chaque jour. Il n'a pas d'une chaise uh, roulant à la, uh, une, durant une journée uh, où est-ce qu'il ne pratique pas le tennis en fauteuil roulant. Donc, um, pour lui, il a, il, il a été... Uh, il a été exposé à une, à une vue, si tu veux, d'utiliser uh, une chaise uh, pour le tennis en fauteuil roulant, que c'était seulement une pièce d'équipement pour le sport. Donc, c'était exactement comme uh, une paire de souliers ou une, une raquette de tennis. Um, donc, il encourage les autres um, qui ont peut-être une amputation um, de regarder, uh, de regarder les, les sports en fauteuil roulant de cette manière. Uh, que c'est vraiment seulement un autre équipement de sport. Um, puis aussi, uh, ayant une amputation, uh, ça, ça aussi, ça aussi te, te permet d'avoir de certains avantages même dans les sports, uh, puisque tu as aussi beaucoup de, de mobilité um, et beaucoup d'habileté aussi, uh, ayant seulement une un amputation et non um, un manque de, manque de force uh, dans, dans certains mystes. Donc, c'est ça. Okay, and now to, to finish off our individual questions, wheelchair tennis is a Paralympic sport. It's been part of the Paralympic Games since 1992, and that's really the pinnacle of tennis and any other para sport. And now Kai, you've had the opportunity to attend several Paralympic Games. Um, you've won medals at the Paralympics, and you've participated um, at World Team Cups, which are essentially a large scale international team competition for wheelchair tennis. What's that experience been like for you and what did it mean to represent your country? Donc Kai, tu as eu l'opportunité de participer à, à plusieurs Jeux paralympiques et Coupe du monde. Uh, quelle était cette expérience et um, comment ça ça t'a permis uh, de, de partager ton expérience avec les les prochains uh, les prochains athlètes du futur? Wow, uh, how much time do we have? Um, I mean, clearly the Paralympic Games, Nathan, you said it, are the pinnacle for disabled athletes. I was fortunate enough to participate in three games, three medals, so Barcelona 92, Sydney 2000, and Athens 2004. And the, the rawest emotions uh, as an athlete that I can recall were the Barcelona games because I was like a kid in a candy store, brand new on the scene, had only been playing for a couple of years. And here I was not only competing, but uh, I was an underdog and uh, got myself into the final match and uh, uh, yeah, and, and uh, won a medal. And everything that goes along with that, the, the, the hype that the, it happens at games with, with you know, media, which usually isn't the case in, in disabled sports, the, uh, the village, the experience with the athletes, the opening ceremony when you, you, know, you as a team, you go up the ramp into the stadium and there was 80,000 people in that stadium in Barcelona. And it's just literally you're shaking because it's so emotional. And um, on the World Team Cup, uh, subject 
completely different dynamic. It's a country competition, so it's a team thing. And usually, you, uh, we we don't compete as a team. We're individual athletes. Here, I was with three fellow German athletes, and it was all about what can I do to help this team to win. And um, we managed to win that competition for the first and only time for Germany. And uh, so those both those dynamics, Paralympics and World Team Cup competition are absolutely the highlights of my athletic career. So Kai mentioned that the Jeux Paralympics and the Coupe du Monde, which he represented his country, are the most famous saillants of his career. The first premiers Jeux Paralympics he attained in 1992 are really un événement qui, qui tient à cœur, euh, puisque c'était ses premiers Jeux. Euh, il, il se sentait comme un, un jeune garçon dans, dans, un, euh, dans un magasin de bonbons. Euh, il, il aussi partage que ses, les, ses, jeux, de, ses jeux paralympiques euh, sont vraiment le, euh, le point, si tu veux, euh, la compétition la plus... Euh, la plus grande compétition euh, au niveau mondial, donc c'est vraiment euh, c'est un honneur pour lui de, de représenter ce, son pays et il, il partage aussi euh, et encourage aussi euh, les nouveaux à, à, à rentrer dans le tennis pour essayer de se rendre à ce niveau. Great. Now we have about 12 to 15 minutes left, so I want to switch it over. Um, to the Q&A. So if there's any questions that we haven't got to um, from the chat or any questions from the audience, now would be the time to let us know. Um, so please put a question in the chat or just turn your video on and raise your hand and we'll get to you. So Nathan... Donc on va, on va laisser uh, les, les questions rentrer tout de suite. Donc uh, posez vos questions dans la fonction chat. There was one question in the chat from Stuart Rudner. Oh, you guys addressed that one. I'm sorry. I am losing it. There it is. Um, Jen, I'm not, uh, I, I, I talked about it, but Kai, maybe you would have a better under, mm -hmm. understanding of that question just with regards to so balance issues and unable yeah. to run. I think that he would qualify for tennis, would he not? Very good question, Stuart. So uh, I don't want to get too technical, but there is a clear catalog of disability. It's grouped into seven different types of disabilities where um, a classification panel assesses each athlete. Uh, you are eligible to play now on an international competition level. Anybody can play as such, right? And, and so uh, if you're more interested in, in that, uh, we can get you that information so that you, you know exactly if you fall into one of the seven categories. Donc la question était de Stuart à propos du ballon et où il serait classé. Uh, Kai mentionne qu'il y a définitivement un, un système de classification. Uh, et on pourrait vraiment uh, être en contact avec, avec toi, Stuart, pour uh, faire, être certain que tu connais exactement quelle classe tu serais classé. Uh, et puis, uh, on, pourrait, on pourrait aller de l'avant uh, avec cette classification. And I saw that Patrick asked, what injuries have our panelists been exposed to in tennis? Um, and how have you overcome them? So I'm just going to open this up to the floor after Simon translates and any one of you can jump in. Donc quelle était votre blessure uh, dans le tennis uh, il, y a, il y a plusieurs différents types de blessures qui peuvent se passer en jouant au tennis uh, et quelles étaient les vôtres? Kai, you probably have the most experience. Um I, I guess in terms of uh, myself, uh, tennis it's very much a I get injuries just that are repetitive use. So wrist and, and elbow. Um, what I've found in the last couple of years is my fitness regime has really, I've been able to stave off any, any serious injuries just by being stronger um, and, and, and having sort of um, 
having my trainer really identify what uh, exercises are best to, to strengthen my core, strengthen the, the arms, uh, the muscles of my forearm that uh, make it that injuries are much less, uh, much less likely to occur. Donc, Barry mentionne que ces, ces blessures étaient plus fréquentes euh, au poignet et au coude. Euh, il travaille euh, depuis les dernières années euh, avec son entraîneur personnel pour essayer d'améliorer euh, cette force euh, par rapport à ces, ces deux euh, jointures du coude et du poignet euh, pour faire sûr que ces blessures sont moins, de moins en moins fréquentes. I have a question, if I can. Well, I have two questions. I'm going to take the floor. So my first question, um, we talked a little bit about Paralympic Games and World Team Cup, and, and those are amazing events. But for Candice um, or for Barry that maybe haven't been to a Paralympic Games, um, what was it like at your first competition? So your first wheelchair tennis tournament, first time seeing that many players in one place. Um, what was that experience like? Maybe Candice first, and then Barry, you want to follow up? So Candice and Barry, um, quelle était votre votre première expérience en compétition. For me, I don't know about Barry, but I was terrified my very first competition. Um, I had really just gotten into the sport and decided to throw myself into a tournament for some reason. Um, you know, I lost every single match, but I still will always remember that tournament because it was my very first one. Um, and I will always remember the lessons that I learned and the fact that I left that tournament with this desire to get better. Um, so it was scary for sure, but definitely worth it. Donc, Candice mentionne qu'elle était très, très nerveuse pendant sa première compétition. Euh, malgré, elle a, elle a appris beaucoup pendant cette compétition, euh, beaucoup de détails par rapport au sport, euh, beaucoup de techniques. Euh, et puis aussi, euh, ça lui a vraiment donné une inspiration pour devenir de meilleur en meilleur à chaque jour. For myself, it's sort of funny looking back because my first um, my first competition was it was the International Vancouver event, the Vancouver International Tennis Tournament that was at the time was an ITF three, and so now that I've been on the the scene for a while, I, I'm sometimes not, I'm more scared of participating in ITF three than I ever could have imagined. And I remember my second round match, I played Kohei Kohei Suzuki, who was like ranked 18th in the world at the time. And that was a real, uh, a real eye opener. I was, I was quite happy to get one game off of that. Certainly, driving in to Vancouver the morning that I was playing him, I was like, oh, my goal was to get a point. So, uh, yeah, it was quite, it was quite the crazy scenario. Right. Uh, that was that was fantastic. I really enjoyed both of those stories, um, and I, I think it's perfectly normal to like when you start, you're not gonna set the world on fire. You're gonna have some of those struggles off the bat especially in a sport like tennis where, where there's occasionally large competitive gaps, but with work and effort, you know, you can chip away at those gaps. And obviously we've seen that with Candace is starting to get better results and Barry, you progress, you know, to, to being part of the national team program. So just sticking with it is really important in any sport, but especially with tennis. All right. Don't, um, Vraiment essayer de, de continuer à s'améliorer chaque jour et avoir la patience uh, de, de s'améliorer, de uh, garder, concentrer sur les petits détails du jeu, uh, ça va vraiment t'amener loin dans le tennis. And now I have a question for Kai about coaching, because um, you're also a coach educator. You do a lot of work in training new coaches um, across the country. And what do you think are the key attributes um, in a good wheelchair tennis coach? And what do you hope to teach others um, who are hoping to get involved in coaching wheelchair tennis? So, Kai, what are the best characteristics of an entraîneur au niveau du tennis en fauteuil roulant? So, yes, indeed. Um, thanks for that question. Uh, I, I enjoy this work very much that I've done in the past is to educate coaches and introduce them to wheelchair tennis. And the first slide literally is wheelchair tennis is tennis. You are not all of a sudden coaching a new sport. It's still the same forehands, backhands, 
um, serve tactical game, physical preparation, mental game. And so oftentimes there's a bit of a hesitancy of the coaches. Well, I know nothing about wheelchair tennis. And, and so back to what I said earlier, my, my key message is um, you got to introduce that fun element. You got your, your students ideally should hit a maximum amount of tennis balls. They're not there because you make them push the chair from A to B and backwards and forwards. They're there because they like the idea have seen it possibly on TV or have played um, of hitting that tennis ball. So as much as you can incorporate that in your sessions, um, the, the better your coaching will be because I still see that when I roam around the tennis courts in Vancouver, I see too many coaches um, not giving students enough volume. There's a lineup of 15 students and then it's next, 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 as opposed to let them just play together so that again, they hit a ton of tennis balls in that limited 30, 60 minute time frame that they have. Donc, Kai mentionne que c'est certain qu'un nouvel entraîneur euh, serait peut-être nerveux euh, à être exposé à un, au tennis en fauteuil roulant euh, et à un premier sport euh, au niveau des parasports. Euh, il mentionne aussi que lui, son message, ce serait de euh, faire certain que les, euh, les joueurs que tu, que tu entraînes euh, frappent le plus de balles possible. Euh, les joueurs ont vraiment besoin d'acquérir cette habileté euh, pour être avoir quand même beaucoup de succès dans le sport du tennis en fauteuil roulant. So I just want to acknowledge that we're probably four minutes away from the end, but there's a few more questions. So we will keep going, but if people need to leave right at whatever time it is in your province, it's noon in uh, British Columbia, then we will have the recording after so you can watch the end. But thank you everybody for attending today and we'll be sure to share this and we'll just do a few more questions because there's some great ones. So I, I don't want to miss them. And if I'll just jump in for Jen, there's one from Patrick, um, maybe for all of you. Um, has there been an increase in competition level um, since maybe the inception of wheelchair tennis, do you feel? And Kai, maybe your best. To... Yes, so great question. Yeah. And oh, Simon. Sorry, I should have also paused for Simon. So now we have to double pause. Have for Simon. Simon. Yeah. So um, la première, la première uh, la dernière chose que je vais dire aussi, c'est qu'il y, y a plusieurs questions qui, qui roulent présentement dans la section de chat. Donc, on veut premièrement remercier ceux qui sont présents. On vous invite à rester aussi pour la fin du webinaire. Ça va probablement continuer pour les prochaines minutes. Um, donc, la prochaine question, c'est pour Kai. Um, comment, les, la, comment les compétitions ou le niveau de compétition a, 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 est devenu de plus en plus élevé à travers les années? it has the the level has improved exponentially if you think that wheelchair tennis is only 40 years old a little over 40 years um and um from from the humble beginnings of you know it was a it was a, a recreational sport to the um the pace the the strength the agility with which athletes move today i mean it's like in any sport you will see development from the early early, I only have tennis comparisons, so, so forgive me, but if you take a Rod Laver from back in the 70s to a Bjorn Borg in the 80s to a Pete Sampras 90s to a Roger Federer, um, it's, it's a complete evolution and it's a good thing. It shows that, um, you know, there's progress, athletes are getting more committed. But you could honestly say it's almost unrecognizable if I look at what some of these top players, men, women, quads do today compared to what started in California in the uh, late 70s. Donc, le sport a vraiment très évolué depuis les, uh, les, le milieu des années 1970. Um, le, le sport euh, du côté de l'international a très évolué. Les, les joueurs sont de plus en plus vieux, euh, de plus en plus d'agilité. La, la force des lancers sont de plus en plus forts. Um, et puis, c'est impressionnant de voir euh, le niveau de compétition élevé euh, s'élever de plus en plus à travers les années. Great. Well, those were all really fantastic answers. And thank you to the audience um, for their questions. We're going to try and wrap things up pretty quickly from now. So I just have one final question 
um, for all of our panelists to end our conversation. And it's what has the impact, what impact has wheelchair tennis had on your life? And we'll start with Candice for this one. Donc, la dernière question qu'on va uh, adresser aujourd'hui, on va commencer avec Candice. Quel est l'impact que le tennis en fauteuil roulant a eu sur ta vie? Yeah, so um, I would say for me, just the um, increase in my self-confidence, my self-belief uh, since starting wheelchair tennis. Um, it's been huge for me growing up, not playing any sports, not really feeling like I belonged anywhere. Um, I grew up with a physical disability. Um, so um, I wasn't able to be included or play many sports as a kid. Um, so through wheelchair tennis, I've sort of found myself, if you could say that. Um, it's also helped me be more active and fit and healthy. Like I'm, you know, 33 years old, but I'm in the healthiest shape that I've been in my entire life. And it's because of tennis. Um, and because I've chosen to focus my attention on tennis and getting healthier and stronger and more fit. So, um, those are two of the biggest things that I think for sure. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> Don't. Pour Candice, ça a vraiment, um, vraiment mieux sa condition de vie uh, en termes de sa santé. Uh, sa confiance en soi a vraiment grandi. Uh, elle, elle ne se sentait pas comme si elle, elle pouvait faire des sports um, avant, avant qu'elle ait été exposée au tennis. Um, elle a grandi avec un, un handicap. Um, et puis, elle ne se sentait pas vraiment um, comme si elle pouvait participer Uh, juste au jour où est-ce qu'elle a, elle a été exposée au sport, puis de, de, ce, de ce point de sa vie, um, elle a vraiment continué à évoluer de plus en plus, elle, a, elle, elle est devenue de plus en plus active, et, um, elle a participé de plus en plus dans ce sport, donc elle a vraiment, ça a vraiment monté sa confiance en soi. Ok, and we'll go to you next, Barry. Sorry, when I was, I, I realized my um, mic was on when I was yelling at a kid. Anyways, so um, I guess for me, it's been huge because I've sort of just, you know, gone through my life, this even keeled fella, you know, and, and just sort of getting by on my charming good looks and, and not really, uh, you know, not really too focused. And uh, I'm just kidding about the, the charming good looks. But um, what wheelchair tennis has done for me it's made me really focus and set set goals set short-term goals long-term goals and and that's bled over into my life in general right like it like I just started my I started my master's in in January and I don't think I ever would have done that as a you know as a 53 year old man if if I didn't have this sort of new perspective on life on terms of if, if I want to achieve something, I need to, I need to work towards it. Right. Like I always just like, ah, it'll be fine. I remember when my, uh, when my four year old daughter one time and now she's 18 now, but she, and she still brings up the story. She was throwing up into the, into the uh, toilet. And I said, ah, she'll be fine. And that's sort of how I've lived my life. And so it's, it's really interesting being so, active in my life and making decisions that are focused with a goal in mind. And that's what wheelchair tennis has done. It's, it's been, it's been huge for me. And, and just like Candice, I've, I've never been in better shape. I've never mentally been in better shape. And uh, my social emotional health is, is unbelievable right now. And it's, and it's as a result of uh, wheelchair tennis. Donc le, le tennis uh, en fauteuil roulant a, a vraiment donné une nouvelle perspective de vie à Barry. Uh, ça lui a permis de, uh, de créer des, des buts dans sa vie qu'il il ne pensait jamais pouvoir uh, réaliser. Um, ça l'a vraiment aussi uh, permis de... Uh, ça lui a vraiment aidé à, à mener une vie très en santé. Uh, il est dans la meilleure uh, santé uh, de sa vie jusqu'à présent. Uh, meilleure um, condition physique. Puis, um, il recommande à tous ceux et celles uh, qui puissent s'impliquer uh, de s'impliquer. And Kai, we'll end with you because I know that you've dedicated most of your um, professional and personal life to this sport. So what impact has it had on you and what impact do you hope to have on that next generation? 
Yeah, so I, I can clearly echo everything that Candice and Barry said on so many levels from the health to the confidence piece to um, just the pure enjoyment, uh, energy, getting so much back from wheelchair tennis. And in my case, gosh, what, uh, what more rewarding thing is there to share something with an, a beginner that you know has such a profound impact on them so I think yeah I'm proud of my achievements as an athlete um, the medals and the titles but um, clearly I think what leaves a way bigger lego legacy is that piece is that when you can have such a profound positive impact on on other people's lives so that piece I cherish a lot donc, Kai, Kai est um, très fier des accomplissements qu'il a pu réussir à, à travers sa carrière d'athlète, uh, mais l'impact que lui pense que, que ça a vraiment uh, laissé une marque sur lui, le tennis en fauteuil roulant, uh, c'était que ça lui a permis de, de créer des liens avec des nouveaux joueurs um, et vraiment d'influencer uh, um, la perspective de ces nouveaux joueurs. Um, et vraiment les impliquer dans le, dans le tennis en fauteuil roulant, uh, les, les impliquer jusqu'au point où ils peuvent uh, tenir une vie en santé et, et s'améliorer dans, dans un domaine de leur vie. Donc, um, c'est ce point que, qui tient à cœur, uh, Kai. I would just like to echo what Kai said. I'm, I'm listening to all these players talk and I'm just thinking, man, am I lucky to have the job and the career that I have um, and to be able to work with such great people and have such an impact. So, um, and I'm sure every Bridging the Gap coordinator on the call would agree. It makes all those 16 hour days hosting a tournament so that Barry can get a game off Kuhei Suzuki worth it. So um, thank you all of you for speaking today and thank you to everybody that attended. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, if you're watching and you're not involved in wheelchair tennis or you know somebody that might want to be or might be appropriate for it, um, please get in touch with whoever your provincial representation representative is. And if you aren't sure, you can contact any of us and we will uh, send you in the right direction. So um, that's it for us. Uh, thank you again to Nathan for leading our panel today. You did an incredible job. And uh, that's all. Have a great weekend, everybody. Donc, on vous remercie tous d'être ici aujourd'hui. Um, on, on vous invite à contacter vos, vos provinces uh, respectives pour uh, être impliqué dans le, le, dans le sport du tennis en fauteuil roulant et n'importe quel autre sport que vous êtes intéressé de, de joindre. Awesome. And great job, Simon. Bravo. Yes. Thank you, Simon. And the recording will be available um, for people to watch later on. Um, all of the coordinators will have access to it, and I'm sure a few of us will also publish it online somewhere. All right. Thanks very much. I better go uh, check out the playground. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Hi, Mary. Thanks, Kai. Thank you, Candice. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for the invite. Really enjoyed it. Awesome. Uh, Tracy, we can turn off the recording. I think.